Hi, everyone. Welcome to Social Chats episode 39. I'm really happy to be joined today by Anastasia Shamlak. She is a photographer, an educator, a mentor. I I urge you to go visit her account, Anastasia Whistler, on Instagram and anastasiaphotography.ca, as well as Whistler Wedding Collective. You will be blown away by her content. Um, just before we start, we'll talk about photography, about Instagram, about engagement, flat lays, techniques, pro tips, and so on. Um, but before we start, quick note about Social Chat. Social Chat is a show that Heather and I have put together in order to connect leaders in their industry with business owners. Um, we What they do works well with social media, and we hope this show will help you keep uh, keep busy, be inspired, and be educated. The keynotes will be saved on our website at keepitsimplesocialmedia.com under um, online learning. You'll see social chats. All the links will be there and also on our YouTube playlist, social chat under Keep It Simple Social Media. So without further ado, I will split the screen. I'm sorry if I'm pixelated. Thank goodness Anastasia isn't. And so here we go. There she is. Welcome, welcome. Normally I have the applause and I forgot, so I'll just applaud. <laughs> welcome to our show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Excellent. So how about, um, it was kind of a, it's it's kind of a, a, an intro that goes all over the place because you wear so many hats and you've done a lot in, in, um, in your career. So how about you tell us how you got started, what you've been working on and, and where you're, where you're heading and what's happening and yeah. And how you got into photography and then into Instagram and into social media. I'll pass the camera to you. <laughs> that, I feel like that's going to be a long story, but we'll try and go quickly. Um, yeah. <laughs> moved to Whistler 14 years ago. And I had my boys were just babies and I loved photography. So I took a million photos of my kids and my kids' friends. Um, and then before long, people started asking me to take photos of their kids. And so it honestly, it fell into my lap. Um, I was lucky. It was at a time when there wasn't a lot of photographers in Whistler photographing kind of that real life, authentic parts of who you are as a family. So it just um, grew really quickly, kind of that photojournalistic approach. Um, we started with a day in your life and basically would just photo come and I'd photograph you making pancakes in the morning or going for a walk or a bike ride, whatever real life looked like. And I think that's kind of marked my career is really trying to seek out these authentic moments and capture them for people. So it wasn't long after I photographed families that I started to get asked to photograph weddings. And I brought that same approach, just capturing things just as they are. I don't believe a wedding should be about the photos. I don't think it should be set up. I think we should come in like flies on the wall and capture all the moments that just naturally happen in a wedding when loved ones are together. So... That was weddings. And then more recently, um, I've just had opportunity to speak into women entrepreneurs, people who are just starting their business, sharing a lot of what I wish I'd known, um, sharing a lot of my mistakes as I journeyed through this process of being self-employed and balancing life and family and all that that entails. Um, and so I kind of find myself in a place right now as a mentor and a teacher. Um, probably started with the Whistler Wedding Collective, which is a collect collection of women who I have the opportunity and honor to help mentor as photographers in the wedding industry. Um, and then that quickly became helping local bakers or florists. And then that is now into all other aspects of women entrepreneur. And the big topic is always Instagram. How and what and why. And I think as moms, especially, our struggle with the balance of it, not being on our phones all the time. So I'm trying to create some workshops just to help people facilitate and walk through, be strategic and intentional, but not overwhelmed. 
So that's kind of where it's all landed. So yeah, a million hats and hands in a million places, but really enjoying this process and journey. That's so great. And I think, um, so you mentioned Instagram and that's the big part of your business right now. And I was wondering when you um, are, so what would you suggest for Instagram? A lot of people are taking photos with, with their phones and I'm asking that because it's interesting to have your feedback as a photographer. Do you, I mean, the, the phones that we have are, are getting better and better. The cameras are getting better and better. Would you still recommend for someone to, that really wants to consider, you know, taking Instagram to the next step to invest in, in um, professional cameras or what would you, what's your recommendation for that? Yeah, you're right. The phones are getting much better. They're scaring me. I think they're going to put us out of business soon. Um, they're excellent. And I think that you don't need to invest in a camera anymore. I think the upgraded phones um, take beautiful, beautiful images. And unless you are a photographer, then I think absolutely as a photographer, you need to have professional photos that are taken on your regular camera. But for any other business, I think that your phone is fine for photographing those moments in your life, um, your product. I think there's lots of little tips and tricks that you can get to make those iPhone photos even better. Um, but I, where I do recommend is that business owners invest in a photo shoot, maybe once a year, where you get yourself photographed, um, you get your product or your service photographed, and then you can kind of place those into your feed in the midst of your own photos and really create the full package. Oh, I absolutely love that. And I think, um, I think back in the days, people had the, the habit of posting live, like taking a photo and posting it right away. And I think Instagram is a bit of a more curated platform. And to have those professional photography photos in your back pocket really allows you to uh, to step it up a notch on your on your page. And then actually, that brings me to another question I had. What would you recommend for people being photographed? Because I found we had some, for our business for, uh, professional photograph photos taken and I found it to be really intimidating. And I'm in front of a camera pretty much every single day for videos or photos and, and social media. But to have a professional photographer, all of a sudden you add the um, you kind of add the fear that you had to perform because this was going to be really good and this was going to last and be used a lot. So I thought it was nerve wracking and I was really surprised by that. And so what would you recommend for people who are being photographed and maybe, I don't know, that sounds funny, but like angles or what, like how should it be so that you actually show your genuine true self, but also your, your best side type thing? Yeah, for sure. No, that's such a good question. And um, I think that you have to find a photographer that you really connect with and that you feel like they really get you. You know, there you should not be showing up, I think, in this day and age and our needs within Instagram, within social media. We need to humanize ourselves. That's what's the story that's going to set you apart. That's going to set your product apart from anybody else's. It's, it's your why. It's your story. It's, you know, I say like the woman who makes bracelets and her bracelets are beautiful and they're photographed perfectly on white. But what I'm interested in is how she, that she also has twin little girls and how she's balancing her life with her twins and making her bracelets. And I want to see those behind the scenes. I want to, I want to buy her bracelets because she's a mom. I want, I want so much more from the service, from the product, um, from the person. And so I think, you know, Instagram really pushed that because it gave us this little look into people's lives. Um, I so I think you need to find a photographer who's going to really get who really understand you, who's going to help you humanize that side of things. So for us, when we do um, content creation for a brand um, and we generally specifically work with women entrepreneurs, um, I'm asking about her values, her dreams. Um, you know, what are all of the things that make you you? Because it's not just what you do, it's 
the way you love your husband. Um, it's the way that you are show up with your friendships. It's your commitment to meditation in the mornings or you're eating healthy. So we bring in all those elements. And so we kind of want to look at Instagram as a mini brand. And that is why you're right. We curate it. I curate three months in advance for my Instagram. It's all planned out. Um, and then within every grid of nine, I want to see every part of who I am show up there. So for me, that's showing a wedding photo, showing a family photo, showing my family, um, my love affair with our back forest and the walk I take every day or try to take every day. You know, all of that needs to kind of show up the way that I want to empower women, um, tips and tricks for Instagram. You know, all of these things should show up and you see them right away. So if you have a photographer who has that clear understanding of your values, of your brand, then I think when they show up, they're just coming into your every day. So I think that takes away a bit of that intimidation, that need to have that perfect photo, because it's not one photo that's going to tell people on Instagram who you are. It's all the photos put together. So I think, yeah, I, I worry less about angles or perfection. And when I'm looking to photograph somebody specifically for the Instagram to create content for them to use within their marketing, I'm trying to see them as a whole person and just come into their day. Does that, does that help? Yeah, absolutely. That's really interesting because I think a lot of people think that you have to keep Instagram for your business and then do, that you should have um, to profile and make sure that you keep business with business and then your life with your life, but it's it's intricate. And it's sometimes it's hard to say to people, it's okay to show your face even. A lot of our clients, when we teach um, we teach marketing, they don't, they don't want their face to be there. They don't want to be part of it. They want, either if they're realtors, they want to see their listing. And we try to tell them it's more, it's about your story. And I think that's the key to social media these days is to be able to share a story and not necessarily share just a flat image. And um, so what you say resonates a lot. Also, I like, so do you want to talk to us a little bit? Well, might as well step into Instagram, but what's your um, concept on the, so what's for people who are just starting with Instagram, a lot of our, our um, viewers are, are really new at Instagram. So how, what's the concept of the nine square and a grid and how can you plan that in advance when you don't know what your next day is going to be and should you kind of use Instagram stories on the side? So what's what's your take on all that for strategy and planning for people that are kind of new at all this and they, they're not sure what how to tackle it all type thing? Yeah, and it's, it's a lot to tackle. It can be incredibly overwhelming because we have a platform that's constantly changing. We have an algorithm that's constantly changing. We have new things coming in from Instagram all the time that you kind of have to learn and be on top of. I tend to pick my battles a little bit with it. Um, you know, my primary goal with my Instagram is to have a really beautiful feed that shows somebody who's going to look at it for two seconds what I'm about, hopefully to gain their following, and then hopefully eventually, of course, to sell a service to them. So if they follow me, if they like what they see, if I show up in their feed con consistently, then I'm hoping when I launch a new workshop or when I am taking on new family families to photograph, they're going to think about me because they're going to have already have feel like they have a relationship with me, that they know me. Um, so my feed is very specific. It's very curated. I'm very intentional with how I post my stories, which I'm terrible at keeping up on. It's the new goal for the fall is to work on stories shows a little bit more of behind the scenes, a little bit more real life, a little bit more day-to-day uh, -day as it happens. Um, you know, Instagram loves when we use everything that it does. So we're going to end up getting um, more followers, more people looking at our feed. We're going to show up on the algorithm the more that we use all of the features within Instagram. And so that's where it's important to use to use the stories and to be posting consistently, to be using hashtags because Instagram will reward us for that. 
Um, Instagram will punish us if we don't post regularly, if we don't use their stories, they're not gonna have us seen as much. So with that in mind, for me, with my life, you know, I'm a mom of two teenagers and um, I have a, you know, an incredible community and our life is busy and my husband works and travels. And then on top of it, I run these three businesses so for me, I just don't want to be on my phone all the time. I, I don't want to be constantly checking. So I have to be planning ahead. I have to be scheduling it all out. So I use Planoly um, to schedule all of my posts. And I organize um, months at a time. So I organize all of my posts within a grid of nine. Because that's kind of what shows up when you first open up your Instagram. And I literally draw out... Um, although we are creating templates, which will be super helpful, um, is I draw out all of these different grids and I figure there's about three grids per month. And so I do it month at a time. And so for instance, um, I know that right now it's fall, it's back to school. So there was a, I knew that I would post a, the first day of school photo of my boys. Um, that's going to go in there. Obviously I couldn't plan that post ahead of time because I couldn't take that photo ahead of time, but I still knew in my planning where it was going to go and that that would fulfill kind of my family portion of my values within that grid. Um, but the rest I can. I want to have two family photos in there. I want to have a couple weddings in there. I want to photograph the, uh, one of the women that we just photographed and her brand photography. So I look kind of just at who am I photographing during this season and then I think, okay, as I'm planning, well, we have Christmas coming up, or we have Thanksgiving coming up. We have a ton of families that come into Whistler for Thanksgiving. So I could probably do mini sessions for families, some of my local families, my return clients. So I'll create that post ready to go. So I'm just constantly looking at the calendar and matching it in with what I'm busy with. And then I create a plan for it. And then I search out the photos or I go take the photos. Basically, it gives me a shoot list at the end of the plan in what I need to, to plan ahead and curate. So I'm a big planner of all of it. Otherwise, I just wouldn't be able to keep up with it. Uh -huh. That's it's it's really interesting. interesting <laughs> Uh, the strategy point of it because we hear over and over people saying like it's overwhelming but we like to say if you have a plan it's way you, it's not that overwhelming because you know where you're heading and you know what to look for when you're out and about so you know that uh, if you have this and that coming up that you should be taking photos that will match that or start creating content we do um Lots of the people we work with, with do blogs or they post more on Facebook where they have, they write a lot more text sometimes. And then so if you have an idea with your content, you know where you're heading and make life so much uh, more easier. Now, I was looking on, on your website and on your different platforms and um, lots of the people we work with, with do blogs or they post more on Facebook where they, have, they write a lot more text sometimes. And then so if you have an idea with your content, you know where you're heading and make like so much uh, more easier. Now, I was looking on, on your website and on your different platforms of the people we work with, with do blogs or they post more on Facebook where they, have, they write a lot more text sometimes. And then, so if you have an idea with your content, you know where you're heading, it makes life so much uh, more easier. Now, I was looking on, on your website and on your different platforms of the people we work with way to blogs or they post more on Facebook where they have, they write a lot more text sometimes. And then, so if you have an idea with your content, you know where you're heading it makes life so much uh, more easier. Now I was looking on a Whoa. Hi, this is going all sideways. Can you he I hear know. me? I, lo I lost you there. It was just repeating. Okay, I've got you now. Yeah, I heard that too. Okay, uh, do you have me good now? I have you good now. Okay, that was just a little blip. Technology. Okay. I, don't, it, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, okay, flat lays, 
and taking photos of products on a flat surface and why and how. Okay. Um, yes. So again, when we plan ahead of time, you know, I'm planning again, like 27 to 30 posts at a time. And so I want to break up the design elements. Really important to me not to have the feed look too busy. I want it to be really beautiful when you go to it. And so um, sometimes we'll want to add a flat lay or a quote within. Um, and so that will be planned out within every grid of nine. Again, I kind of always go back to that. But within every grid of nine, I'm going to want either a beautiful quote or a flat lay just to break up some of the photography that I have. And so with our flat lay, we're pretty simple. We kind of have the plan. We'll have the quote. You know, we'll all decide around that time what I'm talking about. So, for instance, in the next three, two months, you're going to see a lot of, on my feed, you're going to see a lot of us talking about creating content for women entrepreneurs, empowering women within to live out their passions. And so I know that we're about to launch a new website with all of our workshops and um, the new photo sessions that we're doing for brands and for women. And so I'm going to want to start to push my content with that. So that's kind of, um, yeah, that's where we kind of end up going. So I'm going to pick quotes that are specifically about empowering women and about business owners and entrepreneurialism. Like we're going to kind of add all of that in. Um, so I'll know within the next month that I need three flat lays or three quotes. Um, and then we want it to make sense. So for me with flat lays, and I'm probably a little bit different, it does not make sense for me to have a beautiful white backdrop with the perfect coffee with the perfect latte art on it and a gold watch and a perfect pen like because that's not my real that's not my real life i wish i could like move the computer so you could see the disaster that is in front of my computer right now you know i write in 800 different journals i usually have spilt coffee somewhere on my table um you know leftover toast from this morning and a candle burning you know it's a little bit of a mess and so I personally go after that messy look. I want it to be authentic. I want it to be real. Um, so yeah, we're definitely much more into spilling coffee on our flat lays. Um, when we're setting them up, um, I take real things from my office space to keep it authentic. I don't go buy or pretty things that I wouldn't use. Um, we buy a big piece of white cardboard and then, um, and then we lay, start to lay everything down. When I say we, I love to work with my stylist. Her name's Jessie McNoll, and she's incredible. And I often bring her in when we're doing, getting some of these photos ready. And so we'll just start. We'll start with the quote, um, and then we'll just add pieces from my kitchen, from my office. Um, we might move a plant, but we're, we're trying to make it as realistic as possible. And then I take that flat lay, and I pull it over to um, natural light to a window and start taking photos. And all of my flat lays, I use my iPhone to photograph. Huh. This is so great to hear because it's going to be a lot less money in investment. <laughs> I know. <laughs> in investing gear. Uh, what phone do you have? Um, I think I have the eight. Um, I, honestly, I, I don't even know. I have a big, it's like the big six, eight, eight plus maybe. That's horrible. I don't even know. We got a free, no. free upgrade and handed it to me. You know, I'm not big on gear. I'm not big on all the bells and whistles. I never have been. I've had the same camera for the last six years. Um, I think you can do a lot more with what you have than you think. That is great news. I love hearing that. Is there any apps that you use for editing? Yes. Um, I love VSCO as my editing app. That really uh, works for me because it has a little bit more of a filmy look to it. And I really love green in my photographs. Again, I'm, I'm always after that really authentic, real feeling. I, I want to feel something when I look at a photo. So that's kind of exciting. Um, to, have, to be able to have an app that you can do that with. And then there's another one called A Color Story and another app called Snapseed. And a lot of my clients have 
found that they really love those. They're going to give you a little bit more of that clean look, that really uh, crisp white background. And then I think mm. the main thing with filters is to stay really, really consistent. Just always use, maybe don't use more than two or three different filters. Make sure that the filter matches kind of your brand idea um, of what you have. And yeah, just don't put, don't overdo the filters. This is a, so for, we love VSCO too. Do you, so do you kind of lock in a certain, because for those who don't know, VSU has a, a ton of different filters that are available, like pretty much the whole alphabet, and then you can um, edit, like do custom edits as well. So do you use a specific series and like stick to that series to keep it consistent, or do you play with different uh, settings? Yeah, I generally play with the settings, so I'll pull the exposure up to lighten the image a little bit, especially if I'm shooting in my house. Um, and then I will might use a little bit of contrast or clarity, and then I'll add a ton of grain. And that's pretty much my process with each image. Yes. So I keep it, but then I keep that very simple because that's on brand for me. So the brand, um, yeah. yeah, for me, I want the images to look like what they really did look like. I want it to be as honest to this to the image as possible. You know, I don't want there to be, um, for them to look old or too trendy. I just want it to look g genuine. Yes, that's great. And it, they're fun. Snapseed is also, Snapseed is getting, I think it got a big revamp not too long ago too. And it's a really fun one. And I think it's an easy one to start with as well for, uh, a lot of people starting up. And this is, this is free. SEO, you have to pay a bit, but Snapseed is free and it's really mind blowing <laughs> what you can do with it. So, um, okay, we only have a couple minutes. I really wanted to pick your brain on, I hope you can hear me fine, but for people that are starting up in business, what would you like to say kind of to your, um, to yourself like 10 years ago that you wish someone would have told you like something that you've learned that really um, is something you'd like to share to new business owners or women that are struggling and starting up or trying to take it to a next step? Yeah, for sure. I think the biggest one um, is to have a plan a little bit ahead of time. I know I really fell into business and I spent a few years catching up to myself. I think having a really strategic plan, uh, a budget and your goals set out ahead of you is, is priceless. I also think that having a team, you know, bringing people on early, I think is huge. Um, I would be entirely lost without my assistant and stylist and the other photographers who I work with and collaborate with, you know, not to be afraid of competition, um, just to get in with as many people as you can, share your ideas. Only amazing big things happen from that. Um, yeah, just to not be, just to be more open, be more willing to collaborate, be more willing to share. I think that's huge. Oh, I see a question. Um, we have a, yes. Question. Do you want to answer? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I'm still doing, the answer is yes. Um, I'm still doing lifestyle photos um, and I'm still doing weddings, um, but I'm definitely moving into more of a mentorship. Um, and being really strategic and helping specifically women create content for the passions that they want to do. So that does mean that I do a lot of product photography because I will come in and spend the whole day with um, my client and photograph all aspects of their life. So that could be their service, their product, but it could also be their meditation practice in the morning. It could be family photos later on. Just all those aspects that I feel like specifically as women, we need to be visible. We need to show ourselves. Uh, we need to put our best selves out there. We need to humanize ourselves to separate us from the competition. So I'm really wanting to create all of that um, for my clients. And so it's basically a, a day in your life. And that will kind of includes a little bit of everything, but moving away from that typical headshot and capturing a little bit more of the full story. Excellent. So it's already been 30 minutes. It go. It always goes by so fast. How can people get a hold of you or learn more if you do? 
I think probably the best way is through Instagram. So I am Anastasia underscore Whistler. And that's where we announce everything. We have a new website about to launch next month. We're so excited. So we'll um, send all of the details through our Instagram. Um, and then that's it. Perfect. Well, thank you. Oh, here, I'm in the little corner now. <laughs> all right. It was such a pleasure. I know you're really busy and it's back to school and all that and you had a busy summer. So thank you so much for taking the time to sharing those tips. We will be uh, putting them on our website and, and we'll be keeping an eye on your Instagram account and I'll be tracking you down to get a photo shoot because I'm dying to get one done. <laughs> Before the kids get too big. <laughs> Thank you for having Alrighty. me. All righty. Well, thank Excellent. All right. Well, that's it. It's already, yeah, times fly. So we are um, looking forward to have you visit our website at keepitsimplesocialmedia.com and also follow Anastasia at Anastasia underscore Whistler on Instagram. All the links are gonna be on our Facebook page as well as on our website. And the show will be on YouTube to watch as a replay and it will be kept on our Facebook page. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anastasia. And we will see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.